Welcome to another episode of Unexplainable Phenomenons. And stuff. Brought to you by a generous grant from Winston's mom. Thank you, mom. Tonight, we explore yet another local legend. The thing in Walnut Creek. There have been legends about something fishy in Walnut Creek going back decades. The town didn't want to talk about the poorly kept secret, but we got to the bottom of the myth, and what we found will shake you to the core. Yeah, so you might want to send the little ones to bed, especially since this show comes on at 1 a.m. Lights out, little ones. And now we present The Thing in Walnut Creek. The citizens of Walnut Creek will tell you they're known for fishing, hunting, and Mabel's pecan pie over at Hank's Diner. But what no one wants to talk about is the strange happenings over at their famous Tri-Lake area. Walnut Creek, Sam's Creek, and the ominously named Dead Creek draw outdoor enthusiasts all year round. But since the events of last month, it seems the tourists are staying away. Reports came into us at UPNS that an RV was tipped over at the Walnut Creek campground after the campers had a pretty bodacious party on the 4th of July. No one was hurt, thankfully. But some of the partygoers called us to say that the RV was upended by a group of fishmen. Correction, Winston, old friend. Menfish. It's an important distinction. Thanks for the correction, good buddy. We talked with Sheriff Fred Knox, who told us to get jobs and haircuts, before saying that the whole manfish thing is propaganda by the local biker gang, the Ohio Disciples, to scare the town folk. It's all some big joke. There are no fishmen in Dead Creek, Walnut Creek, or any of the lakes in the area. It's those damn bikers, I tell you. Manfish. But the sightings go back decades, Sheriff. How do you explain the unexplainable? Every town's got some made-up thing to draw tourists, like a Nessie or a Bigfoot. Now ours is endangering people, so I need to find out what's in that lake. Before you're up the proverbial Walnut Creek? <laughs> <sighs> Next, we talk to the owner of Smiley's Garage, Smiley. He had some interesting things to tell us. I worked on that there overturned RV. Never seen anything like it. What did you see? Well, there were scratches, more like claw marks, on the side of the RV. Haven't seen anything like it save for the cattle that got mutilated some years back. Cattle mutilations? Yeah, but that just turned out to be some aliens who had taken a spaceship for a joyride and needed cow livers for fuel. Ain't got nothing to do with this. Anywho, the claw marks smelled funny. Like they were made by something that crawled out of the lake. Hmm. Interesting. When we went out to the site of the incident, we ran into David Prues, owner of the Walnut Star newspaper. Sir, what can you tell us about the reports of a manfish wrecking havoc around Walnut Creek? The Star has been following this story closely for years. We used to report it just as a curiosity. You know, unexplained phenomenon. And stuff. Well, yes. But this time, there were too many witnesses. Five members of the Ohio Disciples Motorcycle Club saw the menfish come out of the water and tip over the RV. Mind you, they were drinking pretty hard. Despite that, they were able to give a sketch artist a description. We finally tracked down J.J. Miller, owner of the Starlight Bar and founding member of the Ohio Disciples. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Miller. It's J.J. What does the J.J. stand for? It stands for the two times I did a stretch in the state pen for aggravated assault. My lawyer is working on overturn in my third. Sir, can you tell us what happened? It was the fourth, you know. Me and the boys came down to the lake for a little barbecue and beer. Humless fun, right? Well, immediately, the tourists get all upset at the sound of our hogs, like pulling children into their campers and whatnot. I mean, do we look that scary to you? Uh, no, sir. No, 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 no. Good answer. Anyway, so we set up, grilled some brats, and drank some beers until it gets dark. 
Then we light a bonfire, set off some fireworks, you know? And I'll admit, we might have put back a few brewskis, but we weren't tootin', I swear. Well, maybe Spaz, but he was asleep before they arrived. Who's they? The menfish, dude. That's why you have me here, right? There's four of them. Green, scaly, wearing swimming trunks. Swimming trunks? Yeah, like colorful ones. The type you'd wear to the beach. With little dolphins and stuff. Yeah, I know. But they were real. Clear as day. Well, night. In the firelight, you know. What happened next? Well, they started yelling at us and pointing to the ground and the lake. I think they might have been trying to say it was like sacred ground or something. A bunch of the campers took off running. We laughed and then the fish dudes threw trash at us. And the Ohio disciples don't take kindly to that. Man fish or not. So you beat them up? Not, uh, really. See, that's when they ganged up and tipped over the RV. Whoa. Yeah. Like, most of the guys split on their hogs. I ran, like, to the bathroom. Because I had to take a leak, you know? The police showed up, so I took a powder when they had everything under control, you know? Mm-hmm. Hello, gentlemen. Agent Roger Parks of the FBI, Bureau er, Campground Investigations Division. Feds? I hate feds. Oh, we're the nice feds. Listen, we just finished our investigation, and it turns out the RV was tipped over by bears. Bears? Yes, bears. Those weren't no bears. They came out of the water. Bears swim. Bears aren't green and scaly. They were bears! Okay? I know what I saw, and they were... <laughs> Now, gentlemen, I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement to have you guys report this accurately and fairly. So, there you have it. The Walnut Creek Manfish was really a bear. A totally explainable phenomenon. And stuff. The FBI arrested the Ohio Disciples for polluting and mischief. To avoid adding another J to his name, Mr. Miller and his boys were tasked with cleaning up the campground and Walnut Lake. This made the, um, town folk very happy. And now we must say goodbye. This will be our last show on Public Access 13. I'm going to go make small independent movies with meaning and lots of cussing. And I'm going to make big budget films with lots of violence and cussing. This has been Unexplainable Phenomenon and, and Stuff. stuff.